Hello, my name is Brock Winterton, and I'm a part of the Block Veins MS Research Group. We're today holding a Skype interview with Dr. Michael Dake from California. He is the Chief of Interventional Radiology at Stanford University and has been one of the early innovators in the use of CCSVI and treatments. My name is Michael Dake. I'm Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Stanford University in California. And my background is I'm an internist uh, and trained in pulmonary medicine with a fellowship at UCSF and then diagnostic radiology at UCSF and interventional radiology at UCSF. I've worked uh, in a few places around the country in uh, Miami at the Baptist Cardiovascular Institute, which uh, with Barry Katzen, he and I uh, uh, were involved in the early days of setting that up. Then I came back to Stanford and for 15 years I was the head of interventional radiology and director of the cath lab. Then I went to the University of Virginia as chairman of radiology for four years and came back to Stanford, uh, this time in cardiothoracic surgery and I'm now medical director of the cath angio laboratory facility here, which is a joint facility that includes cardiology, vascular surgery, interventional radiology, interventional neuroradiology, electrophysiology, pediatric cardiology. We all work in the same area. Uh, there are approximately 12 labs that uh, these variety of specialties work in, and it's my job to keep everyone sort of operationally friendly. And uh, that can be a challenge from time to time. But while I was here approximately a year and a half ago, I was first introduced to the idea of CCSVI, or Ex, uh, extracranial venous obstruction and its association with MS by a contact from a patient that, or actually a patient's wife, who uh, had read about the work uh, going on in Italy with Dr. Zamboni, was uh, very intrigued by it, read uh, voraciously about the history of uh, vascular uh, disease and its relationship to MS. Uh, again, as you're well aware, that uh, this goes back many years and early, uh, during the early history of MS, it was actually uh, uh, a very highly uh, considered opportunity that vascular disease might have a role in the genesis of the disease. And then obviously that sort of uh, was uh, eclipsed by the uh, concepts to do with the uh, immune uh, mechanisms modulating the disease, causing disease, etc. In any event, uh, she came uh, with a, uh, some literature, which I was quite skeptical of initially, uh, but she was very persistent. And eventually, as I worked my way through this body of, of uh, uh, reports and, and literature uh, uh, sightings, I, uh, I also became intrigued. And so I invited her up, and we then uh, evaluated her husband, and uh, indeed he had uh, quite, uh, I would say, critical narrowings of, her, of his jugular veins, uh, and that uh, was our very first patient. That was in uh, a little uh, over a year ago, uh, and during that, uh, up until December of 2009, we had the opportunity to treat approximately 40 patients with CCSVI and now we are moving forward to, to get a clinical trial funded and approved so that we can actually study the role of endovascular intervention in relieving venous obstruction. And I say that uh, with some nuance and some precision in that this trial is going to be looking at venous obstruction and not necessarily uh, the effect on MS. I think this is kind of the way right now that is an opportunity that is uh, possible for trials uh, in the current climate and environment that recognizes that uh, we really don't know what role venous ha obstruction has on the genesis or the actual cause of MS, but clearly uh, some of the symptoms of MS, uh, fatigue, uh, brain fog, nocturnal aneurysis, uh, heat intolerance, etc., are obviously very closely linked to the level of venous obstruction and the actual presence of venous obstruction. So perhaps may more accurately 
might be uh, uh, actually symptoms of the venous obstruction and less so the actual primary demyelinating loci in the brain. I see. So in some respects, maybe it's a bridge to actual treatment uh, of the symptoms as opposed to a direct treatment of the actual disease. Well, that, that's kind of the idea. Uh, I mean, we don't know as of yet what role the treatment of the venous obstruction would have on the underlying neurologic disease, but I think there's enough uh, experience, observational and otherwise, to suggest that certainly the symptoms in the short term, certain symptoms that are related to sort of the more global, uh, cognitive, generalized uh, constellation of symptoms can be reversed by effectively treating the venous obstruction. So you've done about 40 procedures, is that correct? Yes. And can you comment on what you found to be the results of those procedures? Well, I think, again, uh, we've been very pleased with the response in these areas of fatigue, especially in terms of heat intolerance. And not everyone has the same uh, constellation of symptoms, but certainly they're common themes. And I think one of the uh, most common of the threads that ties all these seams together happens to be fatigue. And uh, I think that that uh, uh, is something that uh, in most patients that we've had the privilege of, of studying and then treating that there's been improvement. We do fatigue scores, the MFIS on these patients, pre and a two month follow up and in general uh, we found uh, there's some obviously depending on the category of MS relapsing remitting primary progressive secondary progressive they may start at a different mean level of fatigue for those actual groups but when they come back across the board irrespective of where they start there's very close to a 40 or 50 percent reduction in the fatigue scores that's quite significant uh well, again, I think uh, the, the criticism, of course, would be that these are self-reported questionnaires. How can you really uh, determine that there isn't a placebo effect that is influencing these self-report? And that's a very fair criticism. But it's been, uh, it's, these responses have occurred with such a high level of frequency that it does kind of beg the question, well, yes, placebo effect is... Uh, operative, I think, in many patients and in many uh, disease states, but there's really something here that I think uh, uh, will, uh, that compels us to look at a more formal trial where we can have objective and sort of uh, more quantifiable metrics to look at this besides self-reported fatigue.